Hello, it's Ranger Olivia here, and in the last video we talked about traits, and today we are going to talk about what happens to an animal's traits when their environment changes. As we said before, animals get their traits from their parents, but they're also shaped by the environment around them. So what do you think happens when the environment changes? Let's take a simple example first. Say that you went camping and it was really sunny when you left, but then it rained. Since it was sunny when you left, you didn't pack a rain jacket, and you got soaked. The next time you go camping, even if it's sunny outside when you leave, you will hopefully learn something from the first experience and pack a rain jacket. Let's say that it rains almost every time you go camping now. How would you adapt to the situation? Would you check the weather before you leave, get better rain gear, or pack more gear to keep your things dry? You might even move camping sites in hopes for a drier experience. Now let's say that when you grow up, you have kids, and you teach them to always be prepared for rain on camping trips. Then they have kids, and they tell them to always be prepared for rain on camping trips, and so on and so forth. Now you have multiple generations of prepared campers. While this is a very simple and light example, this happens in real life with animals' physical and behavioral traits over generations, so it takes quite a bit of time. These changes in traits help species better survive in new environments, but sometimes if they don't adapt quickly enough or well enough, it can be a matter of life or death. Let's look at a real life example to better understand this. In the 1800s, researchers in England were collecting moths called peppered moths. There were two different types of these moths. One type was light gray, peppered with black spots, and the other type was much darker in color, peppered with white spots. They noted that most of the moths they collected in this study were light colored type. Then, many years later, they collected a new batch and noted that this time, most of the moths they collected were the darker colored type. They decided to dig a little deeper and found that the dark colored moths were actually a gene mutation in the DNA of the light colored moths. Once a mutation was present, dark colored moths would produce dark colored offspring. It could have stopped there, but it didn't quite explain why researchers were now finding more dark colored moths. So they dug even deeper. It turns out it had to do with their changing environment. During the 1800s, Europe and America were experiencing the Industrial Revolution, which basically meant we could build things faster by building factories. While this sounds nice, factories caused a lot of air pollution and was responsible for releasing large amounts of smoke and smog into the environment. It was so much smog that it left a layer of black soot on once lighter colored trees. Moss rest on trees during the day and do most of their flying at night. You may now see where the story is going. As the trees became darker with soot, the light colored moss became easier to see, which made them easier prey for birds. The dark colored moss that now blended in with the trees better survived longer. This gave them a better chance of producing offspring with their same dark colored genes. Over time, the dark colored moth became the more common of the two color forms. What's even more amazing is that after the Clean Air Act had passed in 1950, the air cleared up and the trees became lighter again. Guess what happened? Now the light-colored peppered moss has been the more common in the population because it is better camouflaged. This story shows you that animals best suited for a particular environmental change will have a better chance for survival and thus a better chance of passing on their traits to the next generation. But what it also might show you is that variations of traits within different populations make a population stronger because the environment changes frequently and different traits might be better in different circumstances. What would have happened if the peppered moths did not have a genetic mutation that made their wings dark? If a population has the same traits and no genetic differences, then when something changes in their environment, they may not be able to overcome it as well or maybe not even at all. Let's turn to a more recent example for this explanation. If you don't know about the emerald ash borer already, you should. It is an invasive species of beetle that is found in Eastern Russia, Northern China, Japan, and Korea. And before June 2002, it had never been found in America. 
It feeds specifically on ash trees. It burrows in the cambium layer of the bark to lay its eggs. When the eggs hatch, their larvae eat this cambium layer, or the living layer of the bark, essentially starving the tree of everything it needs to survive and eventually killing it. It's not such a big problem in places that this bug has always lived. Because this bug has always been there for thousands of years, other animals have lived alongside it and developed a taste for it. In other words, they have natural predators in Asia. But since they are new here, the animals here that know nothing about this bug haven't really grown a taste for it, so it doesn't have any natural predators, and it goes unchecked. This is a real problem for the ash trees that are declining at an alarming rate. Scientists are working feverishly trying to find a solution, but so far the solutions they have found to treat the trees are not cost-effective enough to be practiced on millions of trees throughout the U.S. One of the biggest hopes is that somewhere out there, there are some ash trees that have a genetic mutation that allows them to be safe from the emerald ash borer. Hopefully, they will produce more seed and eventually trees that will also be safe. We really don't know about the future of these trees in our forest, but in the meantime, we can stop the spread of this species and many other invasive species by not traveling with firewood and always thoroughly cleaning camping gear before going into another forest. So to recap, traits come from your parents, but they are also shaped by the environment around you. Animals that have the best suited traits for an environmental change are better able to survive and thus pass their traits on to the next generation. And populations that have many genetic variations are stronger because they are better able to adapt to the environmental changes. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.